Hello, welcome to the Research and Disinformation series. These videos were made possible by a partnership between the library and the rhetoric department at the University of Iowa. My name is Chris Way, and all my work on the series has been in collaboration with Tim Arnold and Katie Hassman. I'm Tim Arnold, the Information Literacy Librarian here at the University of Iowa Libraries, and I'm here today to talk to you about disinformation. So let's start off with a reminder about what disinformation is. Disinformation is a specific kind of misinformation. Remember that misinformation just means false or factually inaccurate information. It's false. It never happened. It's false. Disinformation is deliberate misinformation. It's a made-up tale. It's a total fabrication. The person or group who are spreading the disinformation knows they are lying. They know that the information is false. Misinformation could, for example, be the result of a mistake, but disinformation is never a mistake. In order to give you a better idea of what disinformation looks like, I'd like to use a historical example. This is a very famous photo of Joseph Stalin. You've probably heard of him before. He was the leader of the Soviet Union for much of the middle of the 20th century. Now, Stalin was a dictator. He was an authoritarian who tried to get absolute power and control over the entire population of the Soviet Union, which at the time was an absolutely vast land area with an enormous population. It was much bigger than the contemporary country of Russia, which is still the largest country in the world by land area today. So one of the ways Stalin tried to assert control over this vast territory in the 1930s was through an operation that is now called the Great Purge or the Great Terror. During this time, Stalin purged many people from the Soviet Communist Party by either having them killed or sending them far away to work in labor camps in a very remote region of the Soviet Union called Siberia. He did this through a network of secret police and Stalin is pictured here with the director of his secret police, Nikolai Yezhov. Now at some point, Yezhov fell out of favor with Stalin, and Stalin had him executed. Stalin then had Yezhov removed from any mention in all official documents, and even had him removed from photographs. This is the official Soviet version of this famous photograph after Yezhov's execution. So we call this second photo disinformation because it is a deliberate misrepresentation of the original photo. It's something we call a manipulated image. Stalin used many different kinds of disinformation to essentially control reality, to create a reality in which he was the only person in the Soviet Union who had absolute power. No person, group, or institution had more power than him. If he saw someone as a threat, including people who were very close to him, he would simply have all traces of them removed from existence. So I think you might have already started to understand that the point of disinformation is not simply to lie. People use disinformation to establish and maintain power over others by literally controlling reality. Now I'm going to share a quote with you from Masha Gessen, who grew up in the Soviet Union and emigrated to the United States. Now a journalist, Gessen writes for the New Yorker magazine and teaches at Amherst College. I should note that they are using the word propaganda here to refer to a particular kind of political disinformation. And they say here that propaganda takes away your ability to perceive reality. And it does so by controlling people's perceptions of facts. Facts are, in a quite literal sense, the basis of our shared experience of reality. So whoever controls the facts controls reality. So disinformation has been used throughout history and in many different places to one degree or another, but we need to be very clear that disinformation is an enormous problem in the United States right now. You are probably already aware of this. But if you remain unconvinced, I would suggest that you read this very important study published in the peer-reviewed journal Science. We'll talk in a later video about what it means for a publication to be peer-reviewed and why peer-reviewed publications are generally the most accurate and trustworthy publications. So the researchers who published this peer-reviewed study called the Spread of True and False News Online studied Twitter data between the years 2006 and 2017. So 11 years of data. They looked at 200,000 individual news stories on Twitter, 
So not just 200,000 individual tweets, but 200,000 news stories that had been tweeted and retweeted by many Twitter users. So this is an absolute bedrock of evidence. And what the researchers found is that disinformation spreads faster and to more people than real information. So more people are seeing and spreading disinformation than real information on Twitter. So right now in the United States, we have some people consuming a certain set of facts online and then other people consuming a set or sets of misrepresented facts. So our sense of shared reality has become fractured, much like it was for the people living under Stalin's regime in the Soviet Union. To get a better sense of what happens when reality becomes fractured and some people start believing disinformation, I'd like to turn to another historical example. So I'm going to share with you a very long quote from Hannah Arendt, but I think it's worth reading in its entirety. Hannah Arendt was an important 20th century political philosopher. She was German. She was a German Jew who had to flee Germany in the 1930s in order to escape the Holocaust. She emigrated to the United States and started a university along with other German intellectual emigres. Shortly after World War II, she wrote a book called The Origins of Totalitarianism, in which she was trying to think back to how the Nazis took control of Germany and says here about the political atmosphere of Germany in the 1930s that in an ever-changing incomprehensible world, the masses had reached the point where they would, at the same time, believe everything and nothing. Think that everything was possible, and yet that nothing was true. Mass propaganda discovered that its audience was ready at all times to believe the worst, no matter how absurd, and did not particularly object to being deceived because it held every statement to be a lie. So we can see here from this quote in Germany in the 1930s, Germans believe that absolutely everything everyone says is a lie. When someone believes that everyone is lying to them, we call that condition cynicism. And people who are cynical, people who don't trust anyone, usually aren't going to be involved in politics. Cynical people don't see politics as worthwhile because they don't trust political institutions. So cynicism is another point of disinformation because cynicism disengages people from politics, which makes it easier for a dictator to achieve and maintain absolute power. Cynicism is especially harmful in a democracy. Germany was a democracy before Hitler came to power. Unlike Stalin, Hitler was actually elected by the German people. And Arendt's claim here is that part of the reason Hitler was elected is that the political atmosphere of Germany in the 1930s was so confusing to the German citizen because of the predominance of political disinformation that many German voters became cynical and disengaged from politics completely, which is to say they just didn't vote at all. So let's summarize what we've learned about disinformation today. Disinformation is a tool used to control people by controlling their perception of reality. Disinformation fractures society into groups who believe different sets of facts. Disinformation makes people cynical and disengaged from politics. I hope at this point that you've started to see the very important differences between bias and disinformation. We, all of us, have opinions and biases that are based on those opinions but our biases don't necessarily lead us to lie. Bias can alternately lead people to make unfair judgments or useful judgments. Disinformation, on the other hand, is a tool that is used to control people. Disinformation is a deliberately incorrect fact. It doesn't really have anything to do with opinion and bias. Finally, Disinformation is only ever useful to the person, group, or institution that originates the lie. Because it can, it doesn't always, but if it's successful, disinformation can make them more powerful to the point of having absolute power, having total control over, for example, an entire country. <laughs>